Welcome to Wisconsin DNR's Wild Wisconsin Off the Record Podcast. Information straight from the source. Welcome back to another episode of Wild Wisconsin Off the Record, where we bring you inside voices on Wisconsin's outdoors. I'm your host, DNR's Digital Media Coordinator, Katie Grant. I kind of feel like Wisconsin summers are our reward for surviving winter. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's plenty to do here in winter, but some years, like this year, it can be pretty brutal. The good news is that summer has finally arrived. Back on episode 20, we chatted about outdoor recreation. At the time, the Department of Tourism Secretary Designee Sarah Meany mentioned that to her, summer is all about freedom. The freedom to go outside and explore and enjoy what Wisconsin has to offer. But can there be a negative to too much summer? It's no coincidence that July is National Anti-Boredom Month. The kids are out of school and a few too many afternoons of TV on the couch might be wearing on them. So why not escape the indoors and get out to Wisconsin State Parks? If you're not sure what to do when you get there, well, stay tuned to our social media in July for plenty of ideas. But to get you started today, I sat down with Missy Van Landet and Jane Simpkins to discuss some of the lesser known aspects of the parks that might just help you and your family beat the boredom this summer. So sit back and listen in. So we are back today with Missy Van Landet and Jane Simpkins from Wisconsin State Parks. Welcome, guys. Hey! Thanks thanks for having us. So I know we just had you guys on here a couple episodes ago, but what better time to talk about parks than summer, right? It's great, yeah. So why don't you introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a little bit about what it is you do here for the DNR. Sure. Um, I am the Recreation Partnership Section Chief, which is a lot of words that really only people that work here, I guess, get. But um, basically, it's um, public relations and external relations for the most part. And I get to do fun stuff like helping Jane with marketing things or outreach and education type stuff. So I work primarily with folks that use our properties. Fantastic. Jane? So I'm Jane Simpkins, and I am the marketing specialist for Wisconsin State Park System. So I get to do all the fun uh, visual graphics and marketing and out we going Woo-hoo. for Wisconsin State Park. So yeah, shout out, out we go. So we are talking about escaping the indoors and celebrating National Anti-Boredom Month uh, by getting outside and exploring everything that Wisconsin has to offer. And obviously a great way to do this is by going to state parks. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's start first by talking about state parks in general. Are they free to use? They're not. They, you are required to have an admission pass. So you can get an admission pass on a daily basis or an annual basis. And that's required for all of our visitors. How much do they cost? I'm putting you on the spot, you sorry. You are putting me on the spot. It varies depending up upon the property. We do have some properties that are a little bit more than others. The annual pass for in-state is 28 a year that I have memorized. I believe, I'm not even going to guess on the daily because <laughs> I just, I can't. It's between 5 and $8, I think, depending on where you are. But um, $28 for an annual pass, which I will add that I have, I have two kids, as you guys may remember from our previous podcast, and it's more expensive for us as a family to go to a movie. Absolutely. And it's it's not like it's a one time twenty or a every time you go twenty eight dollars. Right. It's a one time thing. So if you buy it this yeah. summer, you can keep having fun throughout fall and winter, yep. um, which is fantastic. And you know the nice thing is too, like I just bought my for our second vehicle, and so those are half price. So if you are a family again, or you you know partners or whatever it may be, and you're not sure what vehicle vehicle you're going to use when you go, your second vehicle pass is half price. So. Oh, wow. so it makes an excellent gift. Yes. <laughs> it it's, it's great to see around the holidays how many um, people tag us on Instagram saying, yeah, I, I bought so-and-so this for a gift because I didn't know what else mm-hmm. to get them. Great. I guess we're past Father's Day and Mother's Day now, but great gifts for that. Um, do people give out Labor Day gifts? Maybe that... Maybe that should become a thing. Yeah, let's get make people it a thing. Labor Day gifts and state parks passes right. so they can go explore the state parks over Labor Day. Yeah. I mean, there's always you know birthdays. Like yeah, summer birth. That's a great yeah. summer birthday gift. It is too. a great summer birthday yeah. gift. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm putting you on the spot again. How many state parks do we have in Wisconsin? 
we have 49 technical state parks. However, we manage as a program, we manage state parks, state forests, state trails, and recreation areas. So those are the primary locations where you do outdoor recreation, even though wildlife areas and natural areas are also places. But we count about 110 total properties that we manage. Okay. But technically there are 49 state parks. And for those of you who haven't gotten one, we've got our new visitor guides that just came out. So check like your tourism, like waysides, travel waysides, and also all of our park properties will have the new visitor guides, which show you all of the state parks, trails, forest rec areas, and all kinds of information about them. Fantastic. So can you expect to find kind of the same things at every property or do they all have kind of different unique things about them? I'd say each has their own flavor. Okay. So wherever you go throughout the state, even if there's, you're at Lake Kaganza, which isn't that far from Gov Nelson, they're globally different parks. Um, And that's what makes our parks so fun. And they all have their own history unique history and background, um, and I'd say their own personality, really. Um, So that's really what makes this job and our job so fun, is that we get to learn more about these properties and the background, and that's what also makes them so fun to visit. You know, I think the nice thing is no matter what you're interested in, you know, you can, again, you can go onto our webpage and you can search by what type of activity you're looking for. So if you are a person that's like, I really, I, I want to go kayaking. And you can find all the places where you can go kayaking at our different properties. And you can also look for areas where you can rent those as well. So, you know, there's you can search by that type of activity or you can say, hey, I'm taking a vacation to this county. And what state properties can I go to in that county and what can I do there? Okay. So exploring some of these hidden gems is obviously a great way to get outdoors, find new things to do and try new things in state parks. How would you guys define hidden gem with regard to state parks? So hidden gem, I would say, is like a treasure. All all of our state properties are treasures, and some of them have unique things about them um, that some people may not know about. Uh, For instance, Newport State Park is one of the darkest spots in the state. It's at the tip of the peninsula, and it's actually been designated as a dark sky park from the International Dark Sky Association, which is a huge deal because it's one of only 18 dark sky parks in the United States. Wow. And only the second in the Midwest. So if you're into, you know, looking at the night sky, check out Newport State Park. I would say that's a hidden gem. Okay. So something really unique, different Mm -hmm. that you probably can't do in many other places in the state. Yes. Okay. And I, and I think it's, we refer to it kind of internally as like, what's the weird? And yeah. so, you know, what's the thing that that folks may want to do when they go there? And what's the attraction? What's the key feature of it? So I think there's a blend of like, it may be something that's popular, maybe not hidden, but it's the gem of the property. Okay. All right. So even though these are hidden gems, we want people to find them, right? We do. And, you know, it's funny because when you think about that, you know, folks are like, well, I'm listening to a podcast on this. Now everyone's going to go there. <laughs> but I think it's in how you how you recreate, how you approach it. Um, you know, and the important thing is, like, what is a gem to me or to Jane may not be the hidden gem to you. But you can find a hidden gem. Find your every, own hidden find gem. Find your own hidden yep. gem at every property, which is, is kind of the fun part. And, you know, what? how I, you know, there may be some very popular feature, but to me it's the gem because of a particular reason. And, the, and something else might be that little hidden gem to Jane for a completely different reason. So I think it's really in how you approach it. But at the same time, you know, if you go to a property and you go inside, like if you're buying your annual pass, I mean, and you didn't do it in the drive up plane, ask the staff what their favorite thing to do is or what their favorite feature is because they all have it at that property and they love to talk about it. So, you know, if whether it's the property manager or the visitor service associate that's helping you out, 
ask them like, hey, you know, I've got a few hours here. What should I do? Like, what's your favorite thing to do? And they'll tell you and they'll tell you why. And it might be a cool overlook on a trail or it might be the beach or it might be a particular campsite, but they will share with you what they love about the property that they work at and what's their own little hidden gem. Summer this year in Wisconsin. It's been a little unusual, came a little late, hasn't been super warm yet. But if past years have been any indication, July, August, probably going to be pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any good gems that can help people get outdoors and cool off? So let me geek out here for like a quick second. Please do. Okay. So you guys, I've been learning about this new thing. You may have heard of it. It's called Blue Mind Science. We just posted about that on Facebook, didn't we? We did. Okay. So let me give you a little info on Blue Mind if you're not aware. So Blue Mind Science is basically refers to the mild, like meditative state you get into when you're in water or just around water or if you're just looking at a picture of water. There's this overwhelming sense of calm that we kind of get when we're around water. And it's sort of that antidote for something called Red Mind which is what some of us get when we're angry or frustrated or stressed, which we all get. So taking a trip to the water, which we're going to talk about today, can have really great mental health benefits as well as physical and just overall make you feel make you feel good in the great outdoors, which is make what you we're feel all, good. all about. Yes. All right, all right. That's why I feel happy. I was like, this is my happy place. Being on water is my happy place. But there's science behind it. Yeah. Yes. It's Legit. it's not just you always wanting yeah. to, you know, take a trip to the coast and yep. put your toes in the ocean. There's there's some real That's science great. behind it. Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yes. So why don't we kind of do a tour around the state, if you will. Let's do it. Talk about some of these. So Door County, hit me up. All right. So Door County actually has the most state parks of any county in Wisconsin. It has five state parks in the county. Rock Island is my favorite. It's okay. probably, if it's not, I'm not even going to venture to say it's my number one. I don't even remember what I said last in our last <laughs> podcast, but it's definitely like top three for me. Rock Island is, in my opinion, if you're not somewhere else along Lake Michigan or if you're not along Lake Superior, Rock Island is my favorite beach, I would say. Um, it's a quick, you know, you have two two ferries to get there, so it is a day to get there, but two ferries to get there and then you walk the five to eight minute walk across the island to the beach and you are transported somewhere else. There is nothing that I can compare it to that is closer than the Caribbean. I mean, it is beautiful, clear, shallow water. You can walk a mile, if not two, along along the shoreline, along the island. And it is just, it's gorgeous. It's perfect for for if you have your dog on the leash and you're walking them around, or if you've got your kids there or your family. But it is, and you know, in the, in the hustle and bustle of Door County in right. summer, yeah. it is a peaceful oasis because it does take two ferries to get there. So that is one of my favorite places to go. And that blue mind is so apparent there because you get there. I was there in July last year with the family and there was one other family on the beach Oh wow! on Whoa. a Saturday in July. And so I think a lot of folks it come to explore the island, which there's so much to do there, um, even for a day trip. So you don't have to go and camp. There's lots of ferries running in the summer, but the beach is beyond worth it. So I would highly recommend planning that into your Door County trip and, you know, staying an extra day. I was just telling my two aunts are going to Door County and I said, stay for three nights because you're going to want an extra day to explore Washington Island and make it all the way to Rock Island and check out the beach because it is Mm -hmm. something you have to do. All right. Added to my list. Definitely. Put it to the top. Put it (laughs) to the top. (laughs) Moving from Door County. Should we just go south along Lake Michigan and talk southeast mm-hmm. area, Milwaukee? Well, you know, I think so many people like like Peninsula. We've kind of got our, our big five or our big eight. So we're going for hidden gems. So we're going to share some other properties that maybe folks could explore this yeah. summer. I like Harrington Beach. which I think maybe people know about Kohler and they know about the Kettles, which we'll talk about too. But Harrington Beach is one of my favorites because – some things that folks don't know about it, there's actually a little inland lake there too. So people go to the big lake and they go to the beach there, which we do have brand new access points and a brand new accessible access point too um, at Harrington. But we have Quarry Lake 
there, which okay. has trails all the way around it. So that come directly from the campground and from the beach area and from the education center there. So a little, not many people realize that that lake is there because so many people go to just explore Lake Michigan and they miss right. the fact that there's a tiny little inland lake there. So I love I love Harrington Beach. It's got a fairly new campground, um, a wonderful education center and shelter there, and then all the new beach access points, lots of picnic areas. But um, I would definitely recommend taking the hike around Cory Lake and checking that out. And just to give people a reference for where it is, like how far north of Milwaukee is it? That's a good question. Um, I believe it's Ozaki County, if I had to guess, or right around there. It's only about 30 minutes south of Sheboygan, southeast okay. of Sheboygan, or maybe even 20 minutes. So it's Right not, around in that general Sheboygan yep. area. Yep. Okay. What else? Well, let's give Lakeshore a little bit of love, because it's unique in itself. I mean, it's right in the heart of downtown Milwaukee. Right. I mean, you've got this urban oasis right here, Lakeshore. And it's also free admission, is that correct? Yep, yep. Okay. and it's the trailhead for the Hank Aaron State Trail. I was going to say there's a trail or a couple trails that go mm-hmm. through it. Okay, so other south e- southeast gems? Well, Lakeshore, just to add a little thing to oh, Lakeshore yeah, yeah. quick. Um, many people go through it, and they don't actually stop in Lakeshore. And, and I think so many folks miss the fact that it's a state park, and it's right there. So one of the things we're going to try to do is, like, make it a little bit more pronounced, add some signage, stuff like that, yeah. so people actually realize that it's this unique little hidden gem in and of itself. In the middle of Milwaukee. But I would tell you, just as an insider, the best time to go is spring to Lakeshore because the staff there and the volunteers and the student groups, they – pour their time and effort into the prairies and they have done incredible work on the prairie restoration there so when those prairies are in bloom in like may and early june is the best time to go there yeah so maybe it's on the water so in and of itself it's a hidden gem but go in the spring see the prairies gorgeous insider tips right here (laughs) all right let's go kind of cut west to the southwest area all right so One of my favorites in this area is Blue Mountain State Park. And a not so hidden gem um, at Blue Mound is the pool. The pool is, yes, I know, you're looking at me like, wait, there's a pool in a state park? Yes, there is. It is Olympic sized, it's heated. There is an ADA accessible wheelchair lift, yes. It's forest themed, as a forest themed splash pad. It's the only forest themed splash pad in Wisconsin, I believe, yes. Um, so it's custom made for Blue Mountain State Park. Um, and a little bit of history I could find was that the previous pool before this one was built in the 1970s, and the new one that's there now opened in 2015. So You've sold me. Yeah, sold. And Blue Mountain is what, like 35-ish minutes from Yeah, about Madison, that. Give about or that. take? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Any other good ones in the area? I like Gov Dodge. Um, you know, when we're talking like the southern part of the state, there is not as many lakes as there are in the north. And so what I like about Gov Dodge is we've got a couple of different lakes there, and but we've got Stevens Falls as well. So that is, if you're kind of in the know when you are planning your trip to Gov Dodge, like if you're an online researcher, you will see that. But it's not a very widely advertised waterfall. So um, you can hike down to it. It's a pretty short hike. And there's a temperature difference when you get down in there. And there's a beautiful little waterfall. And it's a nice little area to splash around in. But it's this tiny little hidden waterfall that, you know, waterfalls are not plentiful in the southern part of the state. No, not at all. So um, it's gorgeous. I also love, um, that's one of my go-tos because the staff at, at Gov Dodge, know that beaches are not easy to come by always and so they do a lot of work to maintain a really nice upkept beach there so and and they also have pet beaches and so again not not easily found but gov dodge is a great place to do that it's also a really nice place to kayak and canoe because one they have a concessionaire that rents them but two um there are all these little nooks and crannies to the lakes there, especially Cox Hollow. So you can, there's great fishing, but also there's little places where you can explore and see different wildlife and birds and all that kind of stuff along the lake. So all right, it's one of my favorites. I all also right. hear Gov Dodge has some excellent ice cream as well. 
So if yes. you're an ice cream fan, get over to Gov Dodge. I mean, it's been a while since I've been to Governor Dodge, mm-hmm. but I don't remember the ice cream, and I feel like that's something I would remember. Yeah, so. you better go remind yourself. Yeah, yeah. huge. You probably should. <laughs> huge, huge ice cream cone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about kind of going north, west central area? So La Crosse, Eau Claire, just kind of north-ish along the west side of the state. I like Mirror Lake. That's one of my go-tos. Um, but what I like about it, this is the hidden part that I didn't know until last year. I've been going to Mirror Lake for 25 years. And the first time I realized that how far you could kayak actually on Mirror Lake, there's, there is a dam at one of the ends. So that's as far as you can go. (laughs) But, um, and I'd never done that before, but they also rent kid kayaks there. So my five and seven year olds, well, they were four and six at the time, got their own kayaks. Jane, do you have a... West Central favorite? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Merrick State Park. So this is located along the Mississippi River. Um, It's a popular spot for anglers and boaters. Um, It's got sort of the marshy backwaters, um, which are home to a variety of plants and wildlife. So great wildlife viewing here. Um, And a little cool story about Merrick is a story of John Latch. So in the early 1900s, um, the Mississippi River bottomland, even if parts of it were owned privately, it was really viewed as public ownership. Okay. So John Latch was a wealthy grocer from Minnesota, and one day he's out on the Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, and wouldn't you know it, a big storm rolls in. So John feverishly paddles over to the side, finds shelter on this farmer's land, puts his canoe over his head, and then the farmer comes up with his dog. Yes, it was still noted that the farmer had his dog with him. (laughs) It's this detailed of history. Um, So it must have been a pretty vicious dog. So anyways, the farmer kicks John Latch off his land in the middle of the storm, and John is so shaken up by the whole experience, he calls his business manager... I don't know if that's what they called them back then, but <laughs> something like a business manager and tells him he wants to purchase all of that land. So fast forward by 1934, John Latch purchased over 18,000 acres in this Mississippi River wow. bottom land, part of it in Minnesota, part of it in Wisconsin. And then he gave 266 acres of that land to Wisconsin in 1919. And then in 1921, it formed the core of what we now call Merrick State Park. Very cool. Yes. So kind of a cool, that's why I like some of these parks, is I just like them for their history. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You do a great job of putting together kind of flashback history posts about state parks in general on Facebook for us. Yes. So, you know, we're talking a little bit about it here, but follow us on Facebook, too, to get some more of that history gem action. Good plug, Katie. Yes. (laughs) I do what I can. (laughs) Nicely done. All right. Any other favorites in the West Central area? Well, Kinney Connect State Park, or as we refer to it as just Kinney, um, is near and dear to my heart because I grew up in River Falls, Wisconsin. Okay. So that it's located there between there and Hudson. And one of the things that I love about it is that the Kinney Connect River runs right through there. And that's where the headwaters are. The, the, is that what you call it when they dump out? Is that still the headwaters? I don't even know. Sure, it is sure. now. <laughs> so where the Kinney dumps into the St. Croix is right at Kinney Connect State Park. And so you can um, take the Kinney from multiple communities, but prim- a lot of people do it from River Falls or some of the launches and stuff around there, and take the Kinney all the way down, and you can dump out into the St. Croix. There's a beach there. But it's one of our only places that you can do Delta camping. So you can actually c- technically camp with your boat right off of the shoreline there. So, And I can't forget about Straight Lake, which we kind of consider West Central. Yes. So one of our newest state parks. And what I love about that is that we've got Straight Lake, but there's also rivers that dump into that. And for me, we call this one of our like quiet state parks or natural state parks because there is only hike and camping there. And there is only um, like carry-in, um, non-motorized boat access as well. And so you can only canoe or kayak or stand up paddleboard there. There's no motors allowed. So let's go smack dab middle of the state. Let's talk a little bit about the Red Cedar State Trail. Let's talk about a state trail. Trail. Okay. Yeah. 
the Red Cedar State Trail goes along the Red Cedar River, which okay. makes sense. <laughs> um, it's part of the Chippewa Valley Trail System. Um, this is a 14-mile rail trail, and it shadows the steep walls of the Red Cedar Valley from Menominee to its connection with the Chippewa River State Trail. Okay. Yep. And then it's got good spots for overlooks while picnicking. So if you're riding your bike and then you want to stop for a photo or if you just want to take a break and have a snack, there's a lot of scenic overlooks. Um, so you can pack a lot in for one day. It passes by prairies, marshland bottoms, forests and farmlands, as well as sandstone bluffs and other unique rock formations. I like Bruni Island. Okay. Um, I think, you know, so often we just are in a hurry to get to our destination mm -hmm. and we forget that part of our experience is the journey in getting there. Yeah. The river road, um, primarily coming from the south, but the river road to get to Bruni Island is gorgeous along the river. So that's one of my little hidden gems is take time to experience your actual drive or bike to get there. But what I like about Bruni Island is that if you check out the campsites, that's one of our few properties. There's not a lot of properties where you can actually um, put in your canoe or kayak right from your campsite. And Bruni Island is one of those. So oh, there wow. are a number of sites that you can have your boat right there and there's a little bit of backwater and then you can get out onto the river. So very cool. Yeah. All right. Should we go north? Yes. First, I will just say, and I will keep it simple, everyone forgets about the flowages. So if you go on the DNR webpage, type in like flowages, and it'll come up with a number of different flowages that we have. What I will say about those is that, again, if you're looking for remote and you're looking for a cool paddle experience, tons of wildlife, tons of birds, insects, you name it. But you can camp at the campsites for free and they're first come first serve. So all kinds of different experiences on the flowages because they're so remote. It's probably our closest way to kind of experience a boundary waters type experience. So I would say just type in flowages and check that out. Not many people do it. And it's a, just a really cool way to experience Northern Wisconsin and the pristine waters of the rivers yeah. that are up there. I'll let Jane go. And then I'll all right. All right. Let's see. Okay. Um, so I went to the Northern Highland American Legion State Forest big name because it's a big place with lots of fun. Um, I went there for the first time this winter for the Soup and Loop event, which okay. was an event that combined a uh, loop trail of snowshoeing followed by lots of soup. So anyways, while I was there, we snowshoed past um, the lake there, and I'm not sure what the name of the lake is, but it was beautiful. I couldn't believe it. I felt like it was one of those moments where you're like, am I in a postcard right now? Mm -hmm. Like, it was insane. So let's fast forward to summer, because that's what we're talking about now. Um, the Northern Highlands actually has the highest concentration of lakes in Wisconsin. It has over 900 lakes. Let Wait. me just let that sink in. 900 900. Wow. 900, Kate. You, you, yeah. you, you can't go anywhere <laughs> without bumping into a lake. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Wear your water wings. Um, so also the Willow Flowage Scenic Waters area is nearby here. Um, it is a large island studded reservoir, and that's located in west central Oneida County. And it includes 73 miles of shorelines, and 95% of those 73 miles are undeveloped. Wow. Yeah. So this is like true north woods here. Yeah. Some people describe it as almost Canada because of okay. how remote it feels. It's got yeah. that Boundary Waters-esque vibe to it. I mean, you could spend a year there and probably not check it all out. You right. know what I mean? So... There you go. All right. If you actually go, I'll put a plug in for the chamber, the Manaqua Chamber. They helped us with and created their own kind of like water trail adventure there where you can paddle in portage between a whole bunch of different lakes. And they've got the distances and they've got the time it will take you. So if you're looking, that is my little hidden gem for the Northern Highlands. Not only any one of those 900 lakes, but if you, one, stop and talk to any of the staff, they might. They might. I don't know if they will, but they might <laughs> tell you about little hidden lakes that you should check out. But right. stop at the chamber, check that out, get that map. And there's lots of places to rent if you don't have your own. But check out that really cool water trail because you can yeah. go for an hour or two if you want, or you can make it an eight-hour day. And you can spend time enjoying all of those lakes and paddling between them. So right. it's kind yeah. of fun.
Yeah. I think in my in my personal opinion, we have saved the best for last. While Big Bay is one piece of Madeline Island, I will say our state's maybe not so hidden, but our state's gem is having the Apostle Islands. Mm-hmm. And whether you go there in the winter and you you go check out the ice caves or whether you go in the summer and you see kayak because you're super brave and not like me, or whether you <laughs> um, you know go on a boat cruise or you just take the ferry over and go to Big Bay State Park, explore Lake Superior, explore Big Bay State Park, get out on the islands in any way you can. It's a, it's, you know, for me, probably a once in a lifetime experience, but you know, if I can get out there more than that, I would love to do that. I've explored a few of the islands. There's incredible history there. We could do an entire podcast on the islands, right? but, um, we will, we will stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. (laughs) Get, get out and see the islands. It, it's the only place where I've experienced being on a kayak or on a stand-up paddleboard, and you can see 50 feet down below the surface, and you can see ama- amazing rocks and geological formations, and the water is crystal clear. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, an experience unlike any other in this state. So get out to Big Bay. You can do canoeing and kayaking from there. There's guided tours uh, or kayak, sea kayaking from there. Um, but do the islands. The islands are our own little gem, so get out there any way you can. I feel like if you go on Instagram, and you search just Wisconsin as like a place, some of the most beautiful pictures that you will find are from the Apostle Islands. They are, for it's sure. Amazing. I will I will put this safety plug in. Um, don't do what you're not comfortable with. You know, yeah. it is it is open water, it is big water. So go with a guided tour or get on a boat that tours. Um, and just make sure that you've got the weather changes really quickly on mm-hmm. Lake Superior. So oh, it could yeah. be very calm and fine in the next second there's a storm. So so don't do it on your own if you're not an expert. And there are lots of guides and, and um, businesses up there that will guide you and provide equipment and all that kind of stuff. So do it, but do it safely and enjoy your time because it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think the thing to know about state parks, first and foremost, we have ticks and we have mosquitoes. So Amen. It, that, mm-hmm. That's be Wisconsin. Be prepared, folks. But the other thing is that you can find something, no matter what your interest is, no matter how much time you have, no matter your ability, you can find something at all of our state properties that you can enjoy and have a great experience. So no matter where you're going, you whether you like the remoteness or you need something more family friendly, whether you need an accessible trail or whether you want to climb to new heights, there is something out there for everybody. And in most cases, our properties offer that wide variety of experience. So I think it's more just important to get out and explore. And I think you'll find something fun no matter where you go. Yeah. All right, so last question. All right. I want to know each of your number one favorite hidden gem. Oh, man. All right, I'll go. Yeah, go. All right. Go. I'm going. Before going. you can change you your mind. You can't stop me. I'm going. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have two dogs, and last year I, for the first time, went to Point Beach State Forest, and we came across a pet area beach is that what it's how do you say it pet beach pet Mm -hmm. beach so it's just called a pet beach so it's part it's a long it's at point beach state forest and it's a long lake michigan and it's just like this segment of the shoreline where you can let your dogs play in the lake which is amazing um so they don't have to be on leash in the water they don't have to be on leash correct yes and it was just we had the whole segment to ourselves with our two dogs we could just kind of let them go so we could enjoy it and they could enjoy it and it was like i felt like i was in a movie like marley and me or something (laughs) it was like the coolest thing ever so shout out to point beach state forest for you know providing that awesome hidden gem i this is such a tough question i feel feel bad asking if i could go only one place ever again now if i could go to are you talking hidden gem like one specific hidden gem like one little thing or property as a whole i want to know one specific hidden gem rock island beach okay that's by far by rock island beach yeah fantastic thank you guys for 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 giving us you know some of these great tips 
obviously I have some things on my to-do list, mm-hmm. but I think others mm-hmm. will as well. Um, and we're clearly going to have to have you back to talk more about, maybe we just have to do an episode for every region we would of love the state. I think that everyone, I mean, the three of us and everyone listening, uh, can all agree that the one thing we want people to know uh, after hearing this conversation is that we really have a ton in Wisconsin to explore. Very diverse things to do. Yes. It, it can take you a long time to discover it all. So get out there, do it, share your adventures with us. We want to see them. Send them to us on Facebook, send them to us on Twitter, tag us, tag us um, with hashtag out we go, and let us be a part of that with you. Yeah, you have yeah. no excuse to be bored anymore. Yes. My hey. job. No more nice. boredom. We had to tie it all together. You're welcome. Nice job. There's a reason you're the marketing girl. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Are we ready for an out we go on three? Yes. Out we go on three. One, two, three. Out, out we go. go.